Alcoholics A Anonymous programs typically do is 25%. Mm. Most alcohol treatment programs are less effective than 25%. So where is, can one go to get this neurofeedback sessions? Um, because insurance companies typically won't pay for it, mm -hmm. and it is a little spendy, and it takes, you know, oftentimes 20, 30, 40 sessions. You know, oh. If a person is older, it might take 70 or 80 sessions. So you really have to stick to it, to the program. <laughs> if a person is more flexible, sometimes you can um, benefit just with one session. You know, in 15 mm -hmm. minutes, you can get what you need. But virtually every... Um, human emotional mental ailment has a corresponding brainwave pattern oh, and yeah. by just simply normalizing the brainwave pattern oftentimes you can alleviate the the problems now it still requires that a person make changes within themselves and changes in their life but neurofeedback is a very powerful tool for personal transformation so um, if one wanted to sign up for neurofeedback then where would that person go That's a good question. Like, look in the <laughs> phone book, I guess. Look online. <laughs> Search online. There's not many practitioners, and not all of them are that great. Mm -hmm. um, the best one was featured in one of our previous episodes, Marty Wookie. Marty has um, become one of the world's leading uh, neurofeedback practitioners. He has he does a lot of research also, and he his focus these days is on spiritual evolution through neurofeedback. Um, oh, that sounds very interesting. And he trains higher frequencies. Not Until recently, science believed that the human brain only produced um, frequencies up to about 40 hertz, or 40 cycles or impulses per second. Um, it just didn't recognize anything over that. And part of the reason why was because of the limitations of the equipment, because most of it was AC powered, you know, from a 110 volt electrical outlet, and the electrical currents that run through buildings is so strong, and the equipment is so sensitive that when you start getting closer to the 60 hertz frequency, then the noise of the building overwhelms the equipment. So it was only when they started developing uh, portable battery powered units like the Mind Mirror, where you can take it outdoors, away from all this electronic noise, they could actually start seeing what the brain was really doing. Um, and <clears throat> Marty was one of the first ones to discover that there was significant activity at 80 hertz, 100 hertz, 120 hertz. So and what would happen at those frequencies? What's, those what is the brain doing? Well, it's operating much faster, mm -hmm. but when you are predominantly in those frequencies, you feel very connected to things. Um, mm -hmm. Those are the frequencies at which the Tibetan monks meditate at. Um, if you want to be the flower, then you need to generate the higher frequencies. But once you can, then you can project your mind much easily. You're much more telepathic, more psychic. You can do remote viewing more easily at those frequencies. Um, And so neurofeedback can be very useful in learning to produce consciously those higher frequencies and to get into those types of states of consciousness. I, I think that positive thoughts and emotions are also vibrating at higher frequencies than right. the, the dark stuff. I think so. So, so um, we're pretty much out of time. Oh, that's too bad. This was so exciting. And Fascinating. So we'll continue again in our next episode. Thank you for visiting with us. Thank you.